There are a ton of excellent OLED monitors launching this year from the likes of Gigabyte, MSI, Asus, HP, and LG, and at CES I got hands on with almost every model, but there's one display that eluded me and could potentially be the best OLED on the market, and as you may have gleaned from the title of this video, I'm of course talking about the Asus PG32 UCDM, which like many other options will be a 32 inch 4K 240Hz quantum dot OLED monitor with a peak brightness of a thousand nits and a glossy coating for the best possible picture as yes it's way better than a hideous matte option which unfortunately completely ruins image quality as you can see in this picture I captured of what it does to the subpixel so we can all take a sigh of relief that this panel will remain unmangled allowing us to actually appreciate its 4k resolution though of course something like Gorilla Glass would have been far are better still but I digress you might be asking the question okay why should I wait for this one when we have so many other options releasing soon well I'm glad you asked because while I'm sure there will be a whole slew of tiny little features this has that many others possibly won't which I couldn't care less about there's one thing that could actually be a massive improvement now typically Asus uses a custom heatsink on their displays which not only can potentially increase the lifespan of the display, but in the past, it's also led to big increases in brightness, which is OLED's biggest problem right now. For example, the Alienware AW3225QF 4K OLED, which I reviewed, only reached up to 480 nits in a 10% window. Meanwhile, the same panel technology on TVs can reach over 1400 nits in that same window size, or roughly three times brighter, making the overall scene brightness much better on those TVs. I also had a problem where the Peak 1000 mode on the Alienware version was actually way less bright than the mode which locked it to a maximum of 400 nits, which is an issue I've had on many Alienware displays in the past, but something that Asus could and should fix with their version launching in not too long. The reason why I say this is because taking a look at the brightness charts I've been using for reviews, one thing you're going to notice is that most MLA WOLED monitors reach around maybe 140 to 150 nits full screen, whereas the Asus model actually reached over 220 nits. That's a 50% increase in the full screen brightness. Likewise, in a 10% window, they were roughly 35% brighter than most of the other OLED options on the market. And then if we take a look at an actual game, it was absolutely insane giving me over two times brighter roughly than any of the other MLAW OLEDs that I had tested. Now, Asus does seem confident that they will likely have leading performance when I emailed them not too long ago, but they also did mention that without seeing other manufacturers' final displays and work still happening on the final production units of their own monitors, nothing can be confirmed at this time. But that statement does leave me confident that they probably will have at least slightly better brightness than the Alienware model I've reviewed so far. In fact, if I was to give you guys my guess, even if I was to be really conservative, we could maybe be talking up to 300 nits full screen on this upcoming display, although probably 280 nits or maybe even a little bit lower would be more realistic. And then on a 10% window, we're probably going to be seeing 660 nits or maybe even higher. Who knows? Maybe they could even get that over 800 nits. So yeah, I do think this will be significantly brighter than many other options on the market once again, which is going to be a huge, huge deal for this display. Now, the only downside is it will be DisplayPort 1.4. So for an RTX, you know, 5090 in the future, that is going to be a bit of a shame that you're locked into display stream compression, which currently has some issues that NVIDIA is trying to resolve on their driver side. But if they resolve all those issues on their driver, it really might not matter too much only time will tell but as a release date it looks like you know i did see some information from a video from victor's reality that allegedly some pre-orders would go live february 16th but i reached out to asus and all they said was official launch sometime in quarter one of 2024 so if i was to guess you'll probably see it available in march and i don't actually know if pre-orders will happen at all and even if they did i probably wouldn't pre-order this display I'd rather just buy it when it's actually available. But there you go, guys. That's the reason why I'm actually probably most excited for this display 
and the Gorilla Glass W OLED coming out from Doe as those two displays should be the brightest and possibly clearest displays on the market with of course the Asus one being a far more reputable company with a lot more units available far sooner. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, Rupro has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes of up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K 60 FPS or 4K 144 FPS 10-bit HDR video through its ultra-thin, flexible, and durable housing and it even supports ER. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out Rupro on Amazon today.